No, it still shows us live on. Facebook. We are live. Yeah, it's somebody it's validate. I'm not I sure. The man behind the curtain will validate we're live. <laughs> I can see us on the screen. <laughs> like I'm literally going to share. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you. You know, I'm only the clicker button here. Good evening, everybody. This is Lisa Baker here at Quilt Babble Live with Lisa and Rona. And you all know Rona. Wave, Rona. Hi. <laughs> so while everybody, um, meaning Rona and our special guest and Steve are sharing this to the other social media uh, platforms, I just want to remind you that tonight we are talking about pattern designs. And we're going to talk about from concept to a completed quilt. And we have some special guests with us tonight. Like I said, you guys know Rona Herman. She is um, my co-host, the Traveling Quilter. But we also have Nancy Bag, Nancy McNally with Hi. Nancy McNally Quilts. Go ahead and wave, Nancy. And Hi, everyone. <laughs> And then we also have Andy Stanfield, and she is with True Blue Quilts. Everybody give your waves. Now, remember tonight, um, if you have any questions or comments, just like every month, just put them in the comment section. If they are questions for any of us, we will try to make sure to get those before we end. Now, we usually do run for a full hour, course it's 7 p.m eastern standard time to eight o'clock and we've done pretty good rona staying within our time frame not not too bad yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing because that is why this is called quilt babble because we could babble on forever about quilts for sure so like i said um tonight we are blessed with these three ladies each one of them have designed and published many quilt patterns and will continue to do so but they're mm -hmm. going to let us into a sneak peek into their life as a pattern designer tonight so let's start off with you miss nancy tell everybody a little bit about yourself and if you had to label yourself what type of quilt pattern designer would you be i.e traditional modern or all the above no <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Nancy McNally of nancymcnallyquilts.com. Um, the type of quilter or designer I am, it varies because I like modern and I love traditional at the same time, so I try to combine them. Most of my quilts are, um, I use I use brights. I, I love brights because I live in Michigan and it's cold. <laughs> it's actually, we have a chance of frost tonight. Oh, I hate it. So, um, so I tend to use brights because they cheer me up and they make me happy. So yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> I love it. Since you're so cold, let's move over on to Andy. Andy, tell everybody who you are, how they can get to you. And if you had to label yourself, what kind of category would you put yourself in as a quilt pattern designer? Thank you so much. It is a thrill to be here. I'm Andy Stanfield from True Blue Quilts and, um, I've got plenty of sunshine here in Arizona. So um, Nancy, I wish I could package it and send it up to, to, to you. Um, I am definitely on the modern end usually, but I'm, I'm pretty eclectic. I like, there's very little bit, bits of quilting that I don't enjoy. So um, yeah, it's I'm, I'm happy to try all of it. Um, I spent a couple years working with Island Batik Fabrics oh. as an ambassador for mm -hmm. them. So I've I've delved into Batik's. Um, definitely love that uh, fabric, and um, I really enjoy exploring modern quilting um, and use a lot of those elements in my quilt designs. Love it, love it. Rona, not that our viewers don't already know you, but go ahead and tell us who you are and how they can get to you and what type of label would you classify yourself as in regards to quilt pattern designer? Well, for those of you that have uh, are just joining us uh, and have not seen my stuff before or joined us for Quilt Babble previously, uh, I am Rona Herman and I run RonaTheRiveter.com, which is a traveling culture blog and YouTube channel. And um, I've 
pattern designer. I've got a couple books, all that fun stuff. Um, as far as uh, labeling what type of pattern designer I am, I would have to say evolving because <laughs> my first patterns that I wrote were very traditional. Um, they're traditionally pieced. They look more traditional, but as my patterns grow and continue, um, they, they're changing and becoming much more modern. So um, in fact, right now I'm working on a couple of collage quilts um, for a new book. So yeah, it's, I, I would say evolving. <laughs> be I, a good description. <laughs> I love it. I think that we all as quilters evolve over time as things change in our life and we learn okay. new techniques. So wait real quick, Nancy, you got to introduce the cat. <laughs> <laughs> the this, cat straight baby. By. <laughs> this is Bruce. Oh, <laughs> so there you go. Oh, don't. The Bruce is keyboard. Cat there we go. <laughs> I call him Mr. Bruce Kitty. He's a cream colored tabby. <laughs> oh, and he's <laughs> shedding. <laughs> Gosh. And he loves me and he likes to be with me <laughs> and sit right in front of my keyboard like he's doing of course. <laughs> Yes. That is oh. okay. That is okay. <laughs> we all um, either have fur babies or know somebody in the family that has fur babies. Oh, so yeah. Oh, it yeah. is all good. So the funny thing is with all of y'all's answers, nothing was surprising to me at all after, you know, I know Nancy and Rona pretty good. Andy, I, you might feel like someone's been breathing down your neck the past week and a half. I've been stalking you. Um, I absolutely love, and I am so sorry, I do not remember the name of it, but it is a very modern looking quilt on your website. To me, it gives almost like a Southwestern vibe, which now knowing that you're from Arizona, because I didn't know that until a few uh -huh. minutes ago. What is the name of that quilt? You're probably thinking of directions and it has a, uh, a lot of feathers and it's, it's fairly neutral background. Yeah. Um, mostly light and then some bits of gray in the background. Um, yeah, and I have a wonderful photograph of that quilt. I went on location with one of uh, my friends who's a photographer and we got some great shots at our, um, one of the local town uh, parks that has the nice big red rocks in the background. But yeah, that definitely um, has a Southwest feel and we chose, uh, I say we because a lot of my quilts, I collaborate with my mom. And so she gave me the initial idea for those blocks. And she kind of gets these ideas and then just says, here, Andy, do, do the design work on it. And so um, it, we went back and forth and, and got everything planned out. And then she helped me pick the colors. And we definitely uh, found a spectrum there with the teals and oranges that give off that Southwest feel. So it was a fun project. I ran it as a block of the month. Um, back in 2021, I think. So that's an I could option. see that being a block of the month. It, it really was eye-catching as soon as I went to your website. Love it. Um, before I forget, guys, at the end of tonight's episode, the last five or 10 minutes, Rona and I are going to talk about who won the organizational challenge. Remember, we've got Moda prizes to give away and also a $25 gift certificate from so indipitous. I see Andy's like, yay. I, <laughs> I love, love prizes. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, don't forget um, at the end of this episode, uh, we're going to do that. So here we go, guys. Now, these okay. ladies <laughs> do not know the questions. They do not know who's getting what questions. So um, look at Nancy uh, <laughs> stressing out. They know the answers. They just don't know the question. It's kind of like Jeopardy here. Okay. Uh, so I am going to, just so y'all will uh, have your nerves at ease, I'm going to give Rona the first question. See, Nancy, I've got your back. I got your back. Um, well, and when I ask this, um, when you answer the next questions, uh, tell us all how long you've been designing quilt patterns. I think that's an important um, question to know. So Rona, number one, how long have you been designing quilt patterns and what inspired you to become a quilt pattern designer? Well, actually, um, it's kind of funny. It all happened, um, well, so 
I didn't, I never sewed like my entire life. I, I didn't sew at all. And in fact, I hated sewing. I grew up very much. I would rather be playing sports, climbing trees, whatever. I, yeah. And then uh, in 2010, my sister, she got a new sewing machine for Christmas. And she decided that as the older sister, that she was going to inform me that it was my time to learn. to sew. Um, and because I'm very much math brain oriented um, geometry, I've been doodling, you know, like 3D boxes and all that kind of stuff since I was a kid, we decided to make a quilt as my first project. And that was before like YouTube was as big as it is now with all the tutorials and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of how I, um, I, I started making quilts on and learning on my own I didn't even know that there was a quilting world and um so once I started working at Joanne Fabric and I think that was like 2015 somewhere around there 2016 they um my students found out that I was making my own quilts uh, and from my own designs because figuring out the math and all that is my favorite part of quilting so they were the ones that encouraged me to actually start making and writing the patterns and because I was always correcting, like the patterns that would it. come down from corporate at Joanne, I would always correct them because there were always mistakes or I know an easier way to do this block, you know, that kind of thing. So um, that's how I got started writing and selling patterns was because of them. So my how many students. years have you been designing quilt patterns, you would say? Designing my own quilts since the very beginning, since 2010. So uh, I guess about 13 sure. years now. Perfect, perfect. Nancy, how many years have you been designing uh, quilt patterns and what inspired you to start designing quilt patterns? Um, well, I had my first quilt published in 2000, it was either 2010 or 2011. So I got inspired because, and this is what I tell when I do trunk shows, this is my story that I tell. Uh, it's kind of funny. So being that I used to live in Rock Hill, South Carolina, I had a little bit of a Southern draw, but I don't have it as much now, maybe, but <laughs> some people say I do. So anyway, um, living up here in Michigan, I call it the frozen tundra sometimes. Um, my niece contacted me and she said, and this was back in 2009, I believe. She said, ain't Nancy, I need a quilt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I keep thinking, I used to talk like that. <laughs> so I didn't have EQ7, you know, electric quilt software. I didn't have it. I just, you know, graph paper. And I designed this quilt for her. And then I showed it to the local quilt shop owner, um, obviously local to me here up in Michigan. And she said, you know, you ought to start teaching. And, and by the way, I'm going to be the editor of Quilters World magazine. I want you to start submitting. And I was like, wow. Okay, so I, um, I, I made that quilt for my niece, Ashley, and, um, and she gave it to her, as she said, quote, unquote, her, her boyfriend. <laughs> so she gave it to her boyfriend. She's now married to him, and they have three wonderful sons. So anyway, um, I decided instead of going with the quilt shop owner's position as editor of Quilters World magazine, which is honestly where you can find almost all my work is with Annie's. They publish Quilters World magazine. I went with um, Love of Quilting and I just designed it by chance. I actually bought EQ7 because that's what was around then. And I learned how to use it. I took the quilt pattern, designed it in EQ7. And just on a whim, I sent it to the editor. I heard back from them immediately. I didn't know how to do this. I had no clue. They accepted it. I didn't know pattern designers that, you know, when you get published in a magazine, I didn't know you got free fabric <laughs> bonus. I was like, <laughs> yes, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. So you were inspired by family, but then when the opportunity knocked, you're like, okay, that's getting a little more inspirational. <laughs> yeah. But you know what was really cool? Being that that was my first quilt that was ever accepted for publication in a magazine. It also made the cover of the magazine. That, oh, is, that, that was good. That was awesome. That We're was gonna, awesome. Sauce. So yeah, gonna, that's how it all got started. We're going to talk about some of those key points that you were talking about. Um, so some more questions will come back around by that. Andy, how many years 
have you been designing quilt patterns and what inspired you to start becoming a designer? It's all my mom's fault. So that's <laughs> going to be the, that's going to be the theme of my story because she, um, as a retirement project, um, thought it would be fun to open a fabric and yarn store. And, um, and now she says that's why I have no inheritance. So it all went into fabric, which is fine. Um, so we live fairly close by each other. And so I was working in her fabric store, having never sewn before in my life, and went down that path, was teaching some classes and needed some filler projects mm -hmm. in off months of the program we were running. And so I just kind of fell into designing that way, coming up with um, additional projects for our uh, strip club when Jelly Rolls first came out. So it's been about since 2006, but our um, our first book, we did the self-publishing route. I love this it. Is Monochromatic Quilts, Amazing Variety that I co-authored with my mom. And you were asking in the first question what our style was. I'm very much a... Um, easy traditional block person mm -hmm. so i'll use that as my inspiration and then go on you know see where that leads me but i'll start with a traditional block and then throw in some modern elements to it but yeah um, we published that book it's still available on amazon um, that came out in 2015 and we wrote a second book um, in 2017. And I've been since publishing uh, patterns on my website since then. So fabulous, fabulous. So you also brought up something else that we're going to touch back on later. So the main reason guys and gals that is watching this, the reason I asked the question of how many years these ladies have been designing quote patterns is because I want you to see that these three ladies are extremely talented and extremely mm -hmm. experienced. <clears throat> Therefore, there is a lot to be learned from these ladies tonight and on past tonight. Make sure you do check out their websites, their blogs and that type of stuff, because there's nothing more educational than actually following someone. Um, and I think Rona said it, um, maybe the other ladies did too, but talking about evolving. And there is probably some of you all that are going to be watching this that is not coming at it as a consumer that buys patterns, but maybe someone that wants to get into fabric um, quilt pattern designs. And I just wanted you to see that these ladies do have great experience. And I am a firm believer in networking, networking, and networking. And we can take everybody with us as we climb the ladder together because Rona said it well ago, she didn't know there was a quilt world. And there <laughs> is a quilt world. It is, you know, so often you hear quilt community. Mm -hmm. Community is small, right? But if you've been in quilting more than a day, you realize it is a world. And Andy, it was so funny to hear you talk about you didn't sew, you didn't this, you were just helping your mom and look where you're at today. And I have kind of drug my best friend and my brother along with me on this journey. And it is so funny to know here I am 50 years old and I never thought I would be able to talk quilt lingo with my brother, but he can hold the conversation and um, it's just fabulous. Fabric pulls you in, quilts pull you in because there's such a warmth, something about our childhood. I think when you're sick, you have that quilt on you and it gives you such comfort. So I don't care who you are, quilting is amazing and it brings you in. So next question, um, I'm going to go to Andy for this. What is your, what is the first stepping stone to creating a new pattern? Is it the vision for you? Do you just start doodling? Um, is it because it comes out of a special request? What is usually the first stepping stones that gets you into designing a quilt? Um, any of those avenues. I am a Libra, so it my answer is probably going to be, it depends um, for, for anything, because there's at least two, two <laughs> sides that play into it. And I've been thinking about this because, especially if you're on Facebook in some of the quilting groups, you invariably see that photo of somebody throws out, you know, a few different 
selections of fabric and says, what can I make with this? Mm -hmm. And as I think about that question, I don't always start with the fabric. I may have a color scheme in mind. Um, Mm -hmm. I showed you my monochromatic book. So I may think, okay, I want to showcase yellow or I want to make a purple quilt. Um, But more often it is playing with some block or design option. Um, Recent, well, for 2023, I decided to do another block of the month program and I decided I wanted to use rectangles. So it's a little bit different block of the month program because usually quilters work with squares and I'm working with rectangular blocks. So that has been a wonderful design challenge. And then just to think, okay, what if I started with a traditional block? How would that look if I changed the dimensions to a rectangle? Or what if I want to do some kind of wonky improv thing? So it really does. It just is a kind of a creative spark. You can take one little design parameter or prompt and then just see where it takes you go for hours correct yeah <clears throat> especially with you mentioned eq7 eq8 is, is the <laughs> updated version and that's my my friend i love sketching and, and dropping different colors in and just having fun absolutely um rona i'm gonna half answer the question for you and that's just because i know what you're working on So for you, over the time I've got to know you, I know there is some things that you just design because kind of like what Andy said, this block comes to mind or this or that. But right now you've been designing a lot of quilts for something special coming up. What is that? Uh, Well, okay. So I've mentioned before that um, we're doing the Iceland trip uh, in, in July, end of July. And then directly at the end of that, I fly to England to, uh, teach, I'm going to be teaching at the, uh, Birmingham Quilt Festival and then spending seven weeks, uh, touring around England and Scotland filming for a new full season of, uh, my YouTube channel. And there's a book that's going to be going with it. So all of the quilts that are in the book, Uh, are all inspired by something to do with England or Scotland, the United Kingdom in general. So yeah, there's definitely, um, that's where the collage quilts that I'm working on um, come into play. And because I saw a couple of, like Andy, you were talking about prompts, like you see something online that just sparked something. And there were two photographs that other people had taken. Uh, One of them was in Edinburgh and another one was in uh, the Highlands in Scotland and I just love the photos. So I'm trying to recreate those photos onto a quilt. And um, it's very much, these quilts are very much out of what people are used to seeing from me. So I'm really excited when it all comes together and and to see how people react to them. (laughs) I just love that inspiration comes from anywhere. And like you said, as quilters, we're always trying to apply it to a quilt pattern. You could be sitting in the doctor's office and look down at the tile floor and you'd be like, oh my God, that would make a great quilt. Oh my gosh. I took a picture. I, I took my son. It was his heart doctor. He was having some tests done anyway. And I, I loved his tie and the geometrical shape and the colors of his tie. And I literally asked him if I could take a close up picture of his tie. So yeah, every, anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Nancy, do you want to answer that question? As in what I'm up to or? Yeah. So what in typically inspires you to do quilt? Like, are you see something visual? Do you start designing by drawing? Like, where do you start your pat, uh, pattern design process? Well, the one that I showed you guys earlier, just a little while ago, um, I'm looking at it. It's, it's right here. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Is that something you're going to share with everybody or are you holding it top secret? No, I, I need to share. I need to well, share. So um, well, I'll tell about it first, but go I was ahead. I say, no quilter ever said, please don't share. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> really, really. Unless so, you're sworn to secrecy by a publisher somewhere yeah. that can be. She's right. She's right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. When, when, the, mm-hmm. when the publisher says, uh-uh-uh, you better uh-uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, next year, July of 2024, 
I have been invited. I will be teaching on a quilting cruise. Um, by, um, oh, oh, shoot. What's his name? You would think I'd have all that information right in front of me. Um, I will put that information up. So the inspiration to that quilt is because it's a cruise line. I have designed a tropical, I want to say it's a tropical sampler. So um, it's really, really cool. I think it is. And I sent it to my family today and got a lot of, you know, great. Well, I read that one text to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that was quite funny. <laughs> but everybody that I sent it to, I got great feedback for it. And so I actually, I sent it to the travel agent who's over, you know, organizing all that. So I took my inspiration from the things that I have seen and done on cruises. And one of the, one thing that has never left my mind from a, from a cruise is that there's always food. There's always food available. <laughs> there's always ice cream or what is it? I think it's frozen yogurt or something like that. You can go get ice cream anytime you want. And there's always drinks available and sunshine, at least the cruises I've been on, sunshine. Absolutely. So, yeah, so I do have that available if I can share it, if that's possible. Please share, share so, your screen. Let's see, I'm going to drag it over to this computer. And Guys, while she's doing that, we'll answer or uh, ask another question. So um, I will go to, and we'll shut up, Nancy, as soon as it pops up on the screen. Oh. Oh, here it comes. Okay, is that it? Is it on? That was quick. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, yep, so, there it is. Okay. <laughs> There's a slight delay on, on Facebook, but yeah, it's there. <laughs> okay, good. So you can see on the quilt, there's a there's a cruise ship down in the bottom corner. There's some big fish because when my husband and I were on um, the last cruise, we would sit out on the balcony and watch the flying fish jump out of the water and, you know, it was really cool. You'd see this school of fish. They would just jump out of the water and back in. And so the fish in mind, they're kind of like right above on the surface of the water. That was just the only way I could figure out how to do it. Um, and I got a lounge chair and there's drinks, there's ice cream. Um, and then you can see the block at the top, the, the spinning block. Um, I think that's pretty cool. To me, that reminds me of fireworks. If they were setting off a firework display. Oh, yeah. on the ship. There you yeah. go. And then I always remember all the colorful, because we always visited the Caribbean, and I remember all the colorful buildings and the houses, and so that's why I have colorful houses. And then I just threw in a couple of blocks. And then there's the pineapple block that I explained to you guys earlier about what pine woe we meant. So <laughs> I love that there's ice cubes in the mixed drink. Yes, I <laughs> love that. Yes, thank you, thank you. And there's a straw, you know. So I mean, that's just <laughs> such detail. That took, this took, I'll be honest, I woke up at 4.20 this morning. I already had some of these blocks designed, but nothing was organized. And that's also a part of designing is when pulling all this together, because not all those blocks are the same size. So right. it's a matter of learning how to do a custom layout in EQ8, because I don't know how to use, what is it, uh, Adobe Illustrator AI? I don't know how to use it. I would love mm -hmm. to have it, but I don't have it. So I had to learn how to do custom layouts. And that's also part of, you know, designing it. Do I just want to do the same old, you know, block to block like I have behind me? Or do I want to give it something unique and different? And you got to make sure that everything can be pieced. And it's not like partial scenes or Y scenes. Because right. for some reason, quilters frown on those things. Even though, <laughs> we do. So. They do. They do. So Nancy, right. I absolutely love that. And Thank we you. are super excited that you gave the first look here on Ooh, Do a Live with Lisa <laughs> and Rona. That is fabulous. So guys, one of the questions that I was going to ask our panel tonight was when they're designing, do they use graph paper? Is there a program? I don't think I need to ask, ask that question because numerous of them have already said EQ8. Um, they referred to EQ7. That was just an older version. So basically that is electronic quilt and then eight is the newest version out. Um, so that is something if you're interested, um, whether you're going to design for the masses or design for yourself, it is a great program. I personally, I love starting on my graph paper. I'm very old school. It's like right now I've got paper and pen in hand. 
I can't help myself. But then to pull it over into EQ is um, fabulous. Uh, you brought up something else, uh, Nancy, that I was going to touch on, but since you already brought it up was, um, I think it was you. What, what happens after you design it? And maybe I'll throw this over to Andy. So once you're in EQ and you design a quilt, we all know that yes, the picture's pretty, but there has to be the written word. <sighs> Do you use, listen to Nancy, she's stopping. <laughs> Everybody likes to do pretty, right? No one wants to do the, the backbone nuts and bolts. So Andy, is there a program that you use that writes all that beautiful text for you? Do you have to do it? Talk to us about that portion. Um, no, there isn't a program that I have found. It all has to come out of your brain. So I will um, sit down and, you know, people love EQ8 because of the formula it gives you for the fabric requirements, the yardage, and, and that is a piece of it, having the overall fabric, but then you need to, as a designer, tell someone else how to make it and how to cut, and so then there is a lot of math, and <laughs> I was a... Um, former high school algebra teacher. So I don't okay. mind sitting with my notebook and, and calculating and, you know, figuring out. You, and I'm sure we all have our little reference cheat sheet, how many strips you can get out of a fat quarter or a yard and, and be able to make the calculations there. And then, of course, be able to double check the yardage that EQ gives you for that. But um, it just is a process that evolves as Rona told us um, once you you start explaining how to make a block and you can cut that down um, into pretty concise instructions and then you can use those block instructions over and over again um, obviously because quilts tend to be made of similar components uh, as so it just yeah um so and there's just, not a computer that's doing it for you no uh, no um and actually it in one of the other quilt groups that i'm a part of there has been a lot of discussion over the last few months because of artificial intelligence and this whole chat gpt thing where you can get the computer to write for you and mm -hmm. so people have experimented asking the computer oh. to write a quilt pattern and it, I haven't tested it myself, but uh, I remember the discussion. People were saying that key uh, components of the sewing process were left out of those computer generated instructions. So 100%. I don't think that we are going to be out of business anytime soon. Absolutely no. not. There's so many, like, a, you know, I keep using the word nuts and bolts to a pattern that people do not realize that do not quilt. And the ones that want to start quilting, they just think, ah, you know, this is this or this is that. And then when they really get into it, they're like, oh my gosh. Even Steve said um, last week or something, he was hearing chit chat from the shop floor and he was like, oh my gosh, talking about the math, just like you were saying, just sitting at the cut table because, you know, even though someone buys a pattern, Johnny, cousin, uncle, Johnny, whatever. He wants this just a little bit bigger. So now I'm not sure how much fabric I need or, you know, whatever. So there's always math involved, even for us that, can, you know, is the consumer that buys the pattern. Cause sometimes we do want to make it larger or maybe we want to make it smaller or whatever. It does happen. So Rona, tell us about, um, I, this is not a fair question, but just so the viewers can understand, because, you know, the question is oftentimes, why does a pattern cost so much? Mm -hmm. How much time, Rona, would you say from concept to completed quilt? Uh, okay, so real quick, first, let me say about the just rule of thumb, if anybody wants a quilt made bigger, add borders. Literally just add strips to the border. You make it bigger, easy, everybody wins. Okay, um, that's my go-to for making it bigger. Um, because lots of times you'll have like a queen size quilt, but they want to put it on a king size bed. You just add the borders because then the borders are going to hang over the side anyway. Yeah. So there you go. Um, as far as, okay, so as a teacher, 
as someone who's worked in a quilt shop, as someone who sells patterns, designs patterns, I have heard a lot about why do quilt patterns cost so much? Mm -hmm. um, and because right now, um, I think the industry standard is somewhere around $12 average, I think for a pattern, depending on the complexity of the pattern. Ten they can 12, be more- Unless it's coming with some type of templates or foundation right. paper piece and, and then the price, right. you know, is even more. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've seen them as much as thirty-five dollars. It just it just depends on the pattern. So generally speaking, for me, when a concept comes to me for making a quilt pattern, first I have to design the quilt. That is, and I same thing. I, I most of my pattern designing is in EQ, um, but I also do some hand drawing and stuff. Then I have to actually figure out the math of it. And EQ is really great, but when if you're making a a quilt for yourself but if you're making it to sell so that somebody else can make it you still have to put in work in tweaking the blocks how am i even if it's a traditionally pieced block you still have to um tweak those blocks so that it's uh it's easy to write the pattern for somebody else to follow so once you get all of the blocks and everything tweaked then you have to um print that out and then you have to make that sample quilt. So that's taking time to purchase the fabric, cut the fabric, make the sample, test each of the blocks to make sure that everything comes out the right size. Um, and then once the sample is done, then you have to actually write the pattern. And so then you're sitting down at your keyboard. I use Word um, to write my patterns. And so then you're also creating all the images that go into that pattern and then writing all of it and uh, checking it for making sure everything is correct. You didn't miss a step. Every, all of, everything's numbered correctly. All the A, B, Cs are in there correctly. Um, and then you have to send that pattern. Once it's written, you have to send it off to a pattern tester. The good pattern designers <laughs> usually use a pattern tester. <laughs> That's where I was a hoping you were going. Right. So then that is a fresh set of eyes going over your pattern to make sure that there's uh, that everything is correct. It's easy to follow. They usually give some good feedback. Then you need to make corrections, possibly. Then you have to actually get the pattern ready to advertise. That means taking pictures of your sample quilt, writing up marketing material to put it, writing up social media stuff, getting it up on your website. Then you have to market it to the quilt shops or a quilt distributor distributor to get it out into the quilt shops. So start to finish, I would say probably six months to a year. That's I mean, exact. like minimum six months for one pattern, um, meaning concept to you're purchasing it at the quilt shop. Absolutely. I would say a minimum of six months. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a lot of work. And that's just for a basic quilt. You get into the more detailed and like applique type stuff. It's, it's a lot more hours going in. So yes. when somebody looks at a quilt pattern that they're purchasing either online or in a shop and they say $12 for a quilt pattern, well, think about all of the hours that have gone into putting that quilt pattern together and all of that testing and stuff that you don't have to do. You can just purchase a quilt pattern and make it. Yeah, definitely. And that uh, leads to a couple other questions that uh, we were going to. And uh, Nancy, I'm going to ask you this because I think you have done this, if I remember correctly. Um, I think you have been a tester for pattern writers, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And if not, I know you definitely know how to find people that will test patterns. Talk to that. Um, well, yeah, testing patterns. <laughs> um, and it kind of goes back to me home educating my kids because you have to think about the people who are purchasing the pattern. They all have a different learning style, how they absorb the information from you. And so I have, yes, I have tested patterns and I, I will say like, maybe one or two sentences that I can't follow and I'll say it out loud over and over again. And then you look at the pattern and you read that sentence over and over again. And so trying to find that verbiage or the wordage that is the correct so that everybody can absorb it is really, it can be very hard. Um, I have a new pattern. I actually designed it last year and this made me think of what Rona said. It takes six months to a year to get it out there. And, um, 
I started writing the pattern and I had a friend, she said, oh, I want to test that one for you. And I was like, okay, oh, all right. Um, I'm not really ready for that. I only have like half the pattern written and it was the easiest part. And um, so she started reading it and she's like, I don't understand how you, I don't understand this sentence. And so I had to go back and say, okay, here's how you do it. So I had to visually show her how to pull these units together. And then she's like, oh, well, why didn't you word it? Da, 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 da. And I was like, I never thought about that. And she said, cause I want to look at the pretty pictures and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, if we could only write patterns that way where we could, we just use the pretty pictures, you know? Right. And, um, and the fact that we also have to label, like Rona was saying, you got to label everything. It's got to be, you know, everything's <coughs> got to match up. And oh my word. And it was funny because this friend of mine, she didn't pay any attention to the labels. And so she cutting instruction, you know, cut whatever label this, she right. just bypassed that information. And so I'm like, okay, I haven't like put the letters to the shape that she's needing to use. So maybe that was why. So I do try to figure out the best wording. And I do have several people. I have two people that actually edit for me. And it's interesting because one editor didn't find certain mistakes and the other editor did. And yeah. so, you know, I think it's better to have it, have your pattern looked at by more than just yes. one editor, you know? And so it's Absolutely. difficult to get, to get our pattern from design stage to actually on the website. And then like Rona was saying, all the you got to market it. You got to blog about it. You got to be in front of everybody's face. And I don't, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> don't forget about me. I'm here. I'm just working. And so, right. you know, that's the hard part is I don't have people that other than editing, I don't have anybody that takes pictures for me. I don't have anybody that long arms for me because I'm the long arm quilter, you know, and so to, to wear all the hats, I find it, it takes me longer than what I want. Right. So, and I don't know if I answered your question. Did I? Well, you did. You did because you said it's better to have numerous people test a pattern. And mm -hmm. that's what I want to get to is that is just another factor of the cost of a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. is, as a consumer, sometimes I think when we don't understand everything behind the scenes, we don't get the 10 or the $12, but you guys are exhausting me talking about this. <laughs> it, it is a very long process. And I know my brother being Mr. Marketer on the back end, he's just like, oh, well, because I've told him over and over quilt stuff. And he's like, you know, whether he understands how detailed it is. So I can't wait till later to hear his response to the journey that we're talking about. But mm -hmm. Andy, let's talk about this. As a consumer, if I was to purchase a pattern and um, I run into an error or something that maybe is not making sense to me, I think is an error, what would you suggest a consumer do in that regard? Like how can they troubleshoot a pattern? Um, I think the 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 part we want to avoid for the health of the industry is the uh kind of the immediate complaining online <laughs> that that yes. would be please don't um you can certainly uh email the designer is always the best look on the website yeah. for errata is the word e r r a t a um because if the designer knows that a error went to print, but there's not a way to capture or get in contact with all those customers, um, it, there's no other way than just to have a dedicated space online saying, okay, I found these errors in my pattern, please print off the updated paragraph or however it, it goes. Um, so definitely, pursue any avenue you can to get to the designer. Um, and that's certainly true of mine. I, I know that things, you know, things happen, people don't catch, you know, we can all read the same sentence and, and just think we understand how to do something and then 
someone else that doesn't have the same experience would interpret it a different way and, and run into problems. Um, so I always encourage customers to please, please come find me. I'm happy to help you. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and then I'll, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, use, use the resources of the quilting world. You know, there's online groups. There are people in quilt shops that are generally happy to, I mean, I wouldn't take in a pattern that I bought from the competitor down the street, <laughs> perhaps to, to ask a store to interpret for me. Um, and certainly not when they're trying to have their big year end inventory, ask them to spend an hour interpreting a pattern with me. But you can generally find people in the um, quilting world that are happy to help or guild mates or, Absolutely. you know, whatever the, the case may be, there are resources to help you interpret those questions. Um, and, and yeah. find a way forward. Yeah, and I will definitely say uh, most um, of the designers that I purchase uh, patterns from on their website, like you said, they will have a dedicated section that says pattern corrections or something like that. And, you know, and I'm talking like some of the big wigs in the, and I'm not going to say quilting community, we're, we're going to start saying quilting world. Um, we're all human. And Rona brought it up earlier when we were off camera about, you know, there may be numerous files that she has of a pattern, right? As the pattern is transitioning. And sometimes maybe by mistake, she sent version eight and it was supposed to be version nine to the printer. And that some, I mean, we're all human. It does happen. But I love Andy that you said, you know, for the love of our industry, you know, don't go out blasting anybody online, really go straight to the designer because the designers are quilters and we all know quilters have big hearts and they want you to enjoy their pattern. So they want you to just reach yeah. out. And, um, and also if there's a mistake, we want to know, like, you know, if, if there, especially if it's a new pattern and there's a mistake yes. somewhere, um, like something's upside down or, you know, whatever we, we want to know that so that we can correct it and, you know, and put it up on the website or reissue whatever needs to absolute, be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. We only got time for a few more questions and then we're going to give our prizes away. Um, there was one that came from the audience and, um, uh, it says do pattern designers, pay for the fabric for their pattern testers. I'm saying yes, maybe so. Some do, no. some don't. It yeah. depends on the pattern designer. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. I would yeah. say if it's a close friend, most of the time the close friend's like, girl, just send me your pattern and I'll test it because we all got a stash. <laughs> um, if you're probably paying someone that is not your bestie, you're, you're probably sending the fabric, you know, to them for sure. Um, Rona, do you want to talk about the nasty, nasty word of copywriting? Mm. Yeah, that's a, so there is a big problem in the, well, not I don't just know. in the quilt world, girl. No, it's not just in the quilt world, but, um, a, a lot of, so there, there's a lot of confusion, maybe is a better word, um, that we see a lot online, especially uh, in Facebook, sometimes in guilds, but a, a lot of it is online. There's even Facebook pages that we have seen where they were, will literally post someone's pattern oh, wow. um, and give it away for free. Or somebody will purchase the pattern and then make a bunch of copies for all their friends. Um, that <laughs> is copyright infringement, uh, and that is illegal. The yeah. patterns um, will, uh, almost all of them, uh, will, especially from the reputable designers, will have a copyright on it. Um, that means that it has been filed with uh, the federal government and it is copyrighted. Um, there is, uh, you would have to talk to an actual like copyright attorney as far as the details of, of the copyright. And but per just state. Right, and per state. Um, but simply copying somebody's pattern and giving it to a friend may seem harmless, but you're literally taking money away from that designer. And Illegal. with all of, yeah, with all of the work that we've talked about that goes into creating a pattern and marketing it and all of that stuff, plus the other costs that of, you know, like running the website and printing costs and paying for the editors and all of that kind of stuff, it adds up. And this, a lot of us, this is part of our livelihood. Like this is how we pay our bills. So mm -hmm. by not, you know, I mean, by 
making copies and, and all of that stuff and not purchasing the pattern from the designer, like I said, it, it, it literally is taking money out of their pocket. Yeah. And I would piggy, piggyback on that, that besides the, the stealing aspect of distributing the, the copyright violations of distributing other people's patterns, um, designers also offer a lot for free and that was my next question. Let it go, yeah, Andy. Yeah, because, you know, it, in fact, my uh, little bit different block of the month, the block patterns are free, but I would appreciate that everybody come to me, come to my website to get that free pattern um, and not just take the free pattern and make the copies and distribute them yourself. Okay. Even if it still has my True Blue Quilts logo on it, I, I need eyeballs on my website. That's another mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes way that designers are making money and um, building their business. So uh, please visit everybody's website and, and bookmark it and come back every few weeks. That would be a great thing. Absolutely. Um, that's a that's a great point, Andy. Going to any, I sort of say these ladies, but anyone in the quilt world, if you appreciate their work, whether it's their two tutorials or their blogs of X, Y, and Z, their designs, definitely guys, give them a thumbs up, give them a share, you know, like you said, visit frequent and often and see what they have going on because, you know, in the world of technology today, the algorithms change constantly of how you get rankings and ratings and that type of stuff. And if you do not support your favorite, your favorite might retire and then you're going to be crying because you can't get mm -hmm. uh, a, a Caribbean sampler quilt <laughs> <laughs> or what was it? Tropical sampler. Is that what you called it? I actually haven't officially named it other than uh, come sail away. Let's sail away. That's what I named it. See, I can't even remember. <laughs> Let's sail away. I love it. I absolutely love it. So we've been talking about uh, fabrics, design, quilt pattern design and stuff. And so we have a few minutes left. I kind of want to give Steve a little shout out. So rhino has been waiting on this because we've talked about it. And then um, Andy and uh, Nancy, we talked about it a little bit before. So for those of you that do or do not know, Steve is my brother. He has recently changed positions in life and he is full-time on his own for design and stuff. He's been doing some great stuff for So Indipitous. So the first thing that we release, if you have not been watching um, my Facebook lives that I do for So Indipitous on Facebook, um, posts on Instagram and stuff, he recently designed, I know there's a glare, these quilt journal books. These oh. are only a few um, that he did. There's, I want to say maybe seven, whoops, I'm dropping stuff, seven designs. But the cool thing is, is each page, hold on. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Each page has a different type quilt on it. Oh, wow. So fun. Yes. Oh, yeah. So these are fabulous. These are available on soindividus.com. Now I'm going to tell you one of the things that I think he's probably most excited about. And most of the things that he's been designing the past uh, month or whatever is things that we have talked about for over five years. So to see them come to fruition is fabulous. So out of the soindividus design uh, collections, like I said, we have the journals. He also has been doing... Let me get the glare off. The reading cards that are all quilt related. Can you see the quilts in our yeah. journals? Here, oh, you know, yes. this was the last series that got released was all barn quilt. These are all greeting cards. They're empty on the inside, so you can write whatever message you want. There you go, Nancy. Kitty oh, Cat. I want anyway, a cream color tabby one. <laughs> I, I, girl, I think there is. I think there is. So he did the individual ones. And then he also did these beautiful box sets where there's 10 cards in them. All of that's on the website. There's more. If you guys love puzzles, he's been creating all of these digital puzzles on sundays.com. Wow. I think he can chime in. I think there's a puzzle a day um, that he's been doing. It's been really, really, really fun. So it's not quilt designs, but it's designs with quilts. <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. I have a question. So I'm coming to town next month. Yes. 
and I'm going to be with my sister. We're going to do a little, you know, girl vacation. So yes. I'm, I'm going to come in and visit before we go to the mountains. Um, yes. Are any of these products in your store, in the it, store, physically in the store? Yes, these products are okay. in the store and they are on our website um, for sure. Okay. I do know some of the journals, um, different ones that like, there was a purple cover, like this one's kind of pink. There was a purple one. I know it is sold out at the moment. Um, but yes, we will have them in the store, Miss Nancy. And we can't wait to come to town and you're supposed Yay. to be teaching a class again soon. Okay, guys, we got <laughs> five, uh, yeah, five minutes left. Let's talk about prizes for our last month and the month before our organizational challenges. You guys were to send in before and after pictures of your sewing or crafting studio. And then Rona and I did um, a monthly thing. Who was with us, uh, Rona, that helped us talk about organizing? Oh, um, uh, Brandy Maslowski. She was the, the uh, quilter on fire. Yes, quilter on fire out of Canada. She was fabulous. A great addition to that session. So Tracy, my, motor, my local motor rep, she had sent um, for you guys Two charm packs. Um, they're called Concrete Jungle. They're all grays and black they're... and white. And then also she sent this fat quarter bundle of Moda Bella solids. Mm. And there is also a free pattern. We were just talking about giving a free pattern, but a free pattern for Moda is also in that. So the winner of this prize, drum roll, Rona. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to botch her name, but it is Brenda Babbley. I know I'm going to botch the last name. <laughs> I will, I will message you, Brenda, but you have won this for your before and after yeah. pictures. So um, I want to say you are in the North Carolina side, but um, if you don't pop by the shop, we will get this mailed to you. There was one other prize. It was for a $25 sewing mm -hmm. gift certificate. Mm -hmm. Drum roll, Rana, for who wins this one. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is actually Rona Herman. What? No. What? Yes, because if you guys have been watching us, Rona recently moved and her poor room was empty. <laughs> So everything you see behind her, we was looking at this wall of paint. And so Rona really buckled down hard. And the thing that you guys can't really see by what you're seeing tonight is this is a hole downstairs of her house. And so not only did she have to put that room together, but her studio, how many square foot is it down there, Rona? Oh, uh, I actually don't know. It's, it's, that it's, many. Half, it's, it's like, it's half the size of the upstairs. So it's, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. So yeah. Rona, this will be coming your way. You can use this on the website or you could just come to South Carolina and shop or Nancy will take it off your hands. She's coming. Yeah. I don't live far from Rona. <laughs> uh, no. Cause I need to get a couple of those journals. <laughs> there you go road trip i'll just pick her up on the way down how's that there you go. Work. andy we'll just have to fly you in you are um a little far it's, it's really funny for me because my husband's company has some offices throughout the uh eastern seaboard there uh -huh. <laughs> so i keep saying you need to go on a business trip so i can visit all my quilting friends in the carolinas absolutely <laughs> You just let us know if it's a Monday and we're closed, we'll open up just specially for you, Andy. <laughs> Definitely. Guys, you all have been fabulous in closing remarks. Um, Nancy, do you have anything that you feel like that um, you would like to tell an inspiring quilt pattern designer as we leave? You know, one of the, what I enjoy the most, because I'm also an AQS teacher, is when we gather with the students and, and you make a mistake in front of them <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're just like me. <laughs> and, and it's like, of course I am. I'm just like you. And tomorrow I actually, I'm going to go teach a class on um, my snowflake feathered star, which is not behind me. It's too big of a quilt. I can't hang it. Um, 
And it's funny because I did make a mistake. Like I had the fabric upside down trying to demonstrate to them and just understand that we are just like you guys and we make mistakes. And I love what I do. Absolutely. Hands down. Love it. And, you know, I am inspired by a lot of things. So I can't, you know, I couldn't even narrow it down if I tried. So I love yeah. it. Andy, do you have any inspiring comments for a potential new quilt design pattern designer? Um, yeah, this is just remember that this is supposed to be fun. So, so if it, if it's turning into a chore, then then find a way to to shake it up and do something different. Whether that is you know trying a different craft or. Uh, getting out of your normal space to to go do something and um it, it it just follow the adventure of it you know it's usually it's just a few sh short s straight seams and <laughs> they all come together to to make these wonderful quilts so Absolutely. enjoy yourself love it enjoy yourself and nancy i love the fact we all make mistakes mm -hmm. that is so true um, Steve has put in the thing so I can spell Brenda's last name because like I said, I butcher it because I'm from mm -hmm. the mountains and we only have Smith, Baker, and Justice. That's it. That's all I know how to pronounce. Um, last name is, like I said, I'm thinking Labee, but it's L-A-B-B-E-E. -E. So Miss Brenda, um, reach out to me for your Mona, uh, Moda prizes. And Rona, last words, how would you, what would you say to inspire a quilt pattern designer that wants to get on the track? Um, I think the one thing that I would say is there's room for everyone um, yes. because they, it, it's, I've heard, I've even heard from people that work in quilt shops that, you know, everything's been done. Well, that's not true because quilting is ever evolving. And if, when you look at, even if you take one pattern and hand it the same pattern to 20 different people, you're going to get 20 different quilts, all individual and unique. And everyone has their own unique vision and inspiration. And that really, to me, is that there's room for everyone. Don't think that, that everything's been done before. There's, if Agreed. you are inspired to design, you should do it. I love it. See, quilty ladies and gents have such hearts. All inclusive. I absolutely love, love that answer. Steve said that Brenda is actually watching. So I'm sure she's at home going, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> she did say that you pronounced it right. <laughs> I don't remember how I pronounced it, but yay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know Brenda and her sister pretty good. So I'm sure she's not shocked that I'm botching her last name. So definitely. Ladies, thank you so much for being our guest. Um, I sort of say speakers, but that's probably not the right word. Um, just our guest. I know I appreciate it. I'm sure Rona does. All of you out there in Quilt Babble World, see us in June. Um, topic will be announced in maybe a week or two. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even sure what it's going to be. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking we said it was on color and color placement and fabric, but do not hold us to that. You know, Rona and I, we like to roll with the punches here and keep it light and fun for everybody. Nancy, thank you. Andy, thank you. Steve, thank you. Behind the scenes, all you viewers, thank you. And to my lovely co-host, thank you, Miss Rona. Y'all have a good night. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> Absolutely. And y'all out in Facebook land, y'all know I might like botch this. So <laughs> you can and hang out for five seconds to see if I'm like for real botching it. Bye everyone. Bye guys. <laughs>